all right welcome back everyone to another video and in this one um very quick hack to get an xbox controller working with an arduino as a wireless uh, control unit for any robot you make or any wireless application you want where you need control whether it's a rover whether it's a it's a robotic arm or anything like that so this is a trick i've used to uh, make sort of generic controller for a lot of my projects and um, yeah so i love this controller for gaming for uh, if, if i am gaming on a controller which is quite rare but if i'm operating a rover if i am operating a robot if i'm doing anything else that requires a controller this is my go-to and it is for a lot of people it's a it's an xbox one controller it interacts with your pc it has bluetooth uh, wireless control as well the quality and feel of it and the actual hold are pretty pretty decent um, and also the joysticks are really nice so overall great controller i need to use it on an arduino as a control device for robotics um, one of the thing is the you, you can interface it with linux um, but that project gets more power consuming and more complex uh, if you don't need all of that functionality if you just need it to be simple arduino is the way to go but how do you connect this thing to an arduino without a lot of fuss you can do it with a lot of fuss you can bit bang usb if you want <laughs> but just a simple method um, and i've created a attachment for it um, and here it is so we'll keep this arduino aside and this is what i have made um a while ago uh, of course it's dusty and it's kind of hacky but uh, so underneath this shield is an arduino uno similar to what i have had here and this is a usb host shield sometimes it's called the uh, human H uh, the hid shield or human interface device shield you can attach keyboards mouse and uh, controllers to it um, so you're not writing uh, an, uh, a, joy, a gamepad controller on our uh, driver for Arduino. All you're doing is this chip basically has all the um, intelligence to control or to receive and send data to the controller. Yes, you can send data to it. You can send vibration data to it um, to, to the controller. And that offloads a lot of software side from the Arduino. And it's just connected over SPI. So it only uses your SPI pins um and so and and there's the arduino on the other hand i have a lipo charger um now this is a special one you'll have to see how mine looks and get uh get something that's similar uh, i know adafruit makes one um and this is one and i have attached a switch to it the adafruit one is much um much more proper um, it's much mature. It has a proper switch on, switch off. It has a lot of uh, charging controls, different LED states, whether it's charging or not, or discharging, all of that stuff. So if you have a time to buy the Adafruit one and it's not too expensive, buy that or do something that I've done. Just add a switch on the uh, LiPo side, or no, the power side to um, the LiPo is connected directly, the power on side to the actual Arduino, and you can charge it through the mini USB jack here. Um, here's a single LiPo. Uh, it's a 2600 mh i'm sure it's lost more than half of its uh, life because it was used in a power bank and it's just taken away from there um the next thing and let me try to focus so that's an hc12 it's a 433 megahertz um radio and it's a ton transparent uart radio and it use you just have uart in and you have the exact same module on the other end on your rover or anything and you have you are out there so as far as your code is concerned you are just sending out serial data and that's it you don't have to interact you don't have to go through special connections you don't have to you know you don't even have to change board rate but you have to do all of that stuff change channel and change board then you can do it through at commands but if you don't want to do it you don't have to do it uh, it's a transparent serial link uh, so this, these are cheap. These are like extremely cheap. Sometimes you can get it for a, a dollar if you're buying in bulk. Uh, but if you want to go expensive and more secure, you have 
telemetry radio for drones these are pretty much the same things as well uh, they have rx and tx and uh, you can do the same thing these are expensive because they're more secure you can't you you generally don't have the issue of a lot of crosstalk uh, with this one if you have like eight of them firing uh, at once you will have a lot of crosstalk and issues uh, so yeah that's the that's the simple setup um, and the way it works is you just uh, it, it's on a platform that you know um, like like a stand for your controller so you put your controller in there and you clamp it just make sure it's at the right position there you go uh, like that and whoops and you connect it to your controller and the moment it powers on it turns on and you can turn it off and you can turn it on like that and i think it might be out of juice but you could see the light come up the data so it initialized and um let me rotate it down so i can show you a couple of things so let's see so you can see the led there right um and that's the tx LED. so it's transmitting continuously uh, and whatever I move here gets transmitted to the other side of that radio now I don't have a proper demo setup right now so what I'll do is I'll keep this here and I'll switch over to a screen share and show you the code um, so at least you get a simple idea of how it's all working all right, so I have connected it to my system so you can actually see what the output is and we'll go through the code first. Um, so yeah, there's this library called Xbox One. That's it. Uh, you initialize that and uh, just have your variables set up. Um, and so that initialization is it. That's it, right? You, you don't know, any, you don't need anything else. Uh, nothing in the setup is related to the Xbox library. It's just a bunch of serial pin printouts. Um, and then you set up a USB task in the loop. Um, and every time uh, if it's connected, you um, get the output for it. And every so often, uh, you, you can see I've used uh, the millis style of delaying it so the delay is set to 100 milliseconds uh, and every 100 milliseconds it will print out all the values now the reason it's set uh, i'm using millis is it actually sort of puts um, a lot of uh, uses a lot of cycles and if you have a proper delay in the arduino code uh, it ends up so it's using quite a lot of memory but not not extreme but from the cpu cycle point it is so if i put even a small delay here the uh, the the controller starts to reset over and over again because it's not getting continuous communication so that's why it's sort of at its um peak and i i can't add a whole lot more uh, but first, I'll show you how these outputs come out. So again, very simple code. You just initialize and just get a bunch of data. Um, you can also send um, the vibration data. Um, so instead of, I think, get, I'm not sure what the function is, uh, but it's probably set vibration pad or some, uh, something like that. I'm not sure. Um, so if I open my serial monitor here, uh, I'm not sure the baud rate is set to. It's supposed to be that, but oh, this is this should be TTY USB two. Um, yep, yeah, there you go. So that's the output data coming out. The first two values are from um, from the joystick, so X and Y. So I've I've not enabled all of it, just the enough stuff I needed, and then you have uh d-pad so yeah d-pad left and right i don't have up and down setup right now and then um you have the xbox button which i use for start uh, and you have the the uh, triggers the left and right triggers so um yeah so that's sort of how i use it and on the rover side or on on whatever the robot i have i just um either um 
read the UART and put it through a sprintf or, uh, or or use it some other way and uh, get the info out. So there are two major changes I am planning on this project. As I have told before, uh, the the UART serial thing um, is not very secure, and to make it secure i will need to use the uh, drone style telemetry radio so that is sort of the first change i'm planning on doing and the second one is right <laughs> this is this is the end of the arduino one um well i am planning on uh, i am planning on removing the arduino from it as much as i love this project as much um, as i wanted the people to use something like this uh, there are limitations to the arduino uno um, it is very cost effective uh, but then the limitation is if you need telemetry data on your handheld um, and on a proper display you would actually need to run a linux running device like a pi zero or something else so that's the plan going forward. I am going to port the entirety of it uh, using um, UDEV and other libUSB stuff, uh, which I already have semi-functional code for it. Actually, I have functional code for it. Just just tests out the button. It's not doing much. Um, and, and use that instead. The battery life is going to be really bad, but then I can always add a big battery. Uh, displays usually take a lot of battery and some of the experiments I've done the actual compute unit where it's a Pi or any other ARM system uh, a dragon board uh, I've, I've tried some of the uh, um, banana pies as well usually they are the least power consuming things it's the uh, L LCD backlight that takes a lot of the power and it just kills the battery life so that's going to be an issue and we'll try and tackle it somehow uh, but that that that's it for the Arduino based Xbox controller. So it's a really nice um, way to set everything up. Um, the connections are simple. You don't have to do anything for the shield. It's SPI just connects itself. Um, you have to do some wiring for the, uh, the the serial, but that's just serials. You can just use the serial ports. Uh, the serial pins and then there's battery so you just put it into VCC um, or, or, or 5 volt if you have a regulator on there um, so yeah that's just it um, very nice short simple project uh, that I use to control a lot of uh, robotic stuff um, um, without making things very complicated you have these NRF um, things uh, so those NRF parts I actually have one uh, if you ever see these, uh, I don't really recommend using them. Let me just give you a quick look. So these are the NRF24L something. I don't remember. Um, and these are 2.4 gigahertz long range uh, high bandwidth wireless communication thing. These are fine. First of all, you do require a complicated driver for it because it's SPI and it's not like transparent UR that you can just send data through it. Um, and it has its own packet thing. And yeah, it, the driver is not that simple for it. So for something, uh, it will require, it will consume quite a lot of cycles on your Arduino or anything else um, and even code space. Uh, but if you... Um, but that's the same thing with the HMI as well. So you're adding this on top of the HMI, uh, HID chip, not HMI, HID chip. And um, uh, the worst thing with this is it's EOL. So the only reason it's available for cheap in the mass market for DIY is that it's end of life and people are just clearing their stock. So if you make a project with this today, uh, maybe in a few months time few years time it won't be there so if you start your um, long-term project on this it might not be a good idea to continue using this um, you can always use these in a in a weird way where you pair them with say an arduino nano and have the arduino nano take care of all the spi stuff and then 
you and then send arduino nano uart commands that the arduino nano then sends to this uh, transmits it wirelessly to the exact same setup and the arduino nano on the other end uh, decodes it from the nrf chip and send it sends it off as another transmit uart communication so that's a way to do it if you want to go that route but it's i think over complicated and you're just over engineering stuff at this point so yeah um mostly it's about the hit chip the um the usb host shield uh, and i was just surprised to find out that you can actually use this high quality controller um for a lot of uh, things on arduino so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this i hope you learned something uh the code is just an example code but i'll post it in the description on on a github gist it's a part of a larger project so i'll just post the project itself maybe you can figure out what the project actually is um but for the timing thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one